After watching a few episodes of Iowa Ingredient, it becomes clear just how amazing the state is for growing more than traditional row crops. Hazelnuts, Brussels sprouts, and so much more. The temperate climate here allows for a wide range of foods to be grown. Ginger, not so much. Don't get me wrong, it can be cultivated here, just not in a classic sown in the garden way. Because here's the deal, one good ill-timed frost and your harvest of ginger is gone. But don't fret, there is a way. Let's learn the basics. On a farm just south of Hampton, you'll find one grower who has put together some pots, planting soil, and a little tenacity to figure out the best way to grow ginger in Iowa. I was in the grocery store and I saw ginger and I said, man, that's expensive. And look, it's got a little green sproutish area that I think it would grow. And so I stuck it in a pot and I started growing ginger. And so this is the new addition here that came out from this that was put in the ground. Karen Koenig owns and operates Koenig's Acres Farm with her husband. They supply a wide variety of fresh produce to their local farmers markets. But this educator by trade is more than willing to experiment to see what's possible when it comes to growing food. We grow a lot of things. We do a lot of the traditional corn and tomatoes and peppers. A couple different varieties of cucumbers. We've got the snap peas. We also like to just try experimenting and growing new things with my students at school. Smell. And so we've grown citrus, the avocados, we've got pineapple plants, and we've also got ginger. <laughs> and it's, it's neat to be able to take something that you typically would buy in a store and you can replace it with something you grew yourself and you can keep going with that same plant over and over for years. Ginger does best in a sheltered spot with filtered sunlight, warm weather, and humidity. It's a tropical plant, after all. It needs to stay away from direct sun, high winds, and waterlogged soil. It's not going to survive over the winter in Iowa. <laughs> so, yeah, it's something that you'd have to take in in the winter if you want it to survive. What I look for is I look for a fresh tuber of ginger in the store, and I always look for it to have several little growth points that are a little greener. Usually they come in pretty good sized chunks so you can break them into several sections. And then each section can be put in the ground by itself. And so you only see a little bit above ground. And once it starts growing, it will send out more tubers underneath the ground. It's got a great set of roots on it. This one's been in there, like I said, a couple of years. To me, a ginger plant looks sort of like an aggressive grass or a small corn stalk that hasn't gotten the stalk on the top and you can just grow them in about any potting soil in any pot that you might have around. As a matter of fact, I have some in an old dish pan because I ran out of pots. This time of year, later on in the fall, if you um, are ready to harvest, you would take the, the plants out and rinse off the, the roots, the tubers, and then you have, you have your own ginger. So what I would probably do with this is I would snap off this section here, use the old tuber for this part for eating um, and then put this back in the, the potting soil and let it go again for next year. It's so simple to grow that I, I think that anyone with a pot and some potting soil and go to the store and grab a chunk of ginger, if it's fresh enough, it'll probably grow for them. Iowa farmers have proven themselves to be creative, resilient, and tenacious. If there's a chance an ingredient can grow here, then it's likely that there's a farmer out there figuring out a way to plant it. I think once my fingers got in the dirt, there was no going back. 